Concern or disregard for vulnerable children in crisis situations is as old as humankind. How individuals, communities, and groups responded to the needs of vulnerable children and those in humanitarian contexts has varied over the long past based on beliefs, values, and behaviors at that time and context. Efforts to protect children in crisis over the past century and beyond have shaped the professionalization of the child protection and humanitarian action sector. In 1924, at the League of Nations Convention in Geneva, Eglantine Jeb, one of the two co-founders of Save the Children in 1919, presented the Declaration of the Rights of the Child to leaders from around the world, stressing the need to remember forgotten children. The child that is hungry must be fed. The child that is sick must be nursed. The child that is backward must be helped. The delinquent child must be reclaimed and the orphan and the waif must be sheltered and succored. The declaration was adopted by the League of Nations a year later, and an extended form was adopted by the United Nations in 1959. In the aftermath of World War II, the best interest principle was used in decision-making processes for the placement of children who were identified as kidnapped or adopted. The 1960s were essentially free of large-scale emergencies, and agencies reshaped their efforts to address longer-term needs. Emphasis on humanitarian action was reignited by the Nigerian Civil War, Nigerian Biafran War, and the Bangladesh War of Independence, immediately followed by large-scale famine in Ethiopia. Some of the first initiatives run by UN agencies and NGOs in the realm that would become child protection and humanitarian action were focused on unaccompanied and separated children and children associated with armed forces and groups, which was then referred to as child soldiers. Early programming in these areas was put in place during and in the aftermath of several wars, the Vietnam War, the Cambodian Civil War, the war between Cambodia and Vietnam, the First Liberian Civil War, the Rwandan War and Genocide, and the Sierra Leone Civil War, as well as in neighboring countries' refugee responses. With increasing recognition that ongoing routine services were not meeting the needs of many groups of vulnerable children, the program concept of children in especially difficult circumstances was adopted by UNICEF. In 1989, world leaders made a historic commitment to the world's children by adopting the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. Contained in this treaty is a profound idea. Children are not just possessions of their parents for whom decisions are made, or adults in training. Rather, they are human beings and individuals with their own rights. It was shortly followed in 1990 by the African Charter on the Right and Welfare of the Child. Close interagency collaboration in the 1990s led to the reunification of tens of thousands of Rwandan children with their families in the aftermath of the crisis in the Great Lakes region of Africa. It is against this backdrop that the Interagency Working Group on Unaccompanied and Separated Children was set up in 1995. It brought together key organizations with field experience on issues concerning separated children. This is the first known example of organized and long-lasting interagency collaboration within the child protection sector. In 1996, Grasa Michel report, The Impact of Armed Conflict on Children, highlighted the disproportionate impact of war on children. In 1998, the Security Council held its first debate on children and armed conflict, and this led, in 2000, to the first ever report on children in armed conflict to the Security Council. Through the late 1990s and early 2000s, the need for contextually appropriate family and community-based approaches to reintegrate abused and exploited children became increasingly apparent, as did the need for prevention and preparedness techniques to protect children from harm before it occurs in the aftermath of a disaster. In 2005, the cluster system was introduced to address the lack of coordination between UN agencies, the Red Cross Red Crescent movements, and NGOs, and subsequently, the Child Protection Working Group was established in 2007 to support coordination of child protection responses in humanitarian settings.
It's also around 2007 that a common definition for child protection in emergencies started appearing in reports and documents from more agencies. Child protection in emergencies refers to all efforts to prevent and respond to abuse, neglect, exploitation, and violence against children in the aftermath of a disaster. In 2012, the first minimum standards for child protection and humanitarian action were released, and the definition for child protection in emergencies was codified in this document for the sector. Increased collaboration and coordination across humanitarian agencies led to production of several interagency technical products, as well as joint efforts to strengthen the capacity of the sector, advocate on behalf of children and their protection, and build stronger evidence for CPHA programming. In 2016, the Global Child Protection Working Group was split into the Child Protection Area of Responsibility and the Alliance for Child Protection and Humanitarian Action. The Alliance for Child Protection and Humanitarian Action launched a revised version of the Minimum Standards for Child Protection and Humanitarian Action in 2019. This video provides only a brief overview of the evolution of our sector more details can be found in the accompanying document, and the journey of the child protection and humanitarian action sector continues. As the sector evolves, it needs to find new ways of working rooted in the sharing of capacity, expertise, opportunity, and the intentional shift of power and resources to community, local, and national actors, while never neglecting the agency of children and the role of caregivers and communities in protection of children affected by conflict and crises.